Hey YouTubers, welcome back to Donny Boy 73 the Small Engine Doctor. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the clutch spring in your Husqvarna 51 chainsaw. Now this video will apply to other models of Husqvarna chainsaws as well. I know that on the Husqvarna 55 it usually is the same spring. And before I start this operation, I'm going to show you what the symptoms are of a weak or broken clutch spring in your chainsaw. So here's the Husqvarna 51 and I'll take it outside, start it up and notice how the chain will turn when the chainsaw is idling. The chain should not be turning at all when the chainsaw is idling. So as you can see there I tried to adjust it to idle as slow as I could and the chain still turned so I'm going to start the operation of replacing the spring in that clutch. What you want to start by doing is removing the two half inch nuts here that hold the clutch cover. You can flip up the saw on its side like this, it might be easier. Now the cover will come off. Next you want to remove the bar and chain, just bring it back and get the chain off. And here's the clutch spring right here. As you can see, it's pretty loose in there. Even the parts of the clutch are loose. So what that's doing is making the clutch grab a lot quicker than it should. That's why it's turning when the engine is only idling. What this is, is a centrifugal clutch. These parts of the clutch expand when the engine revs, thus making it grab the sprocket. Now, I usually use an impact wrench to remove the clutch. It's the easiest way to do it. But a lot of you guys at home may not have an impact wrench, and I'll just show you quickly what to do if you don't. First start by taking the cover off the chainsaw. You want to access the spark plug. There's three screws that hold this cover. There's one at the front and two back here. And what you would do is remove the spark plug. And what you could use is a piston stop tool that you screw into the spark plug hole that will stop the engine from turning. Or what I like to use is a piece of nylon rope. I stuff it into the cylinder. It's soft on the piston, it won't damage anything. And then when you turn the clutch to remove it, it's going to jam the engine up, thus allowing you to remove the clutch properly. But for today I'm going to use my impact wrench to remove the clutch. And remember that when you remove a clutch, usually there will be instructions on it telling you which way to spin it to remove it. Usually all clutches on chainsaws are left-handed threads, meaning that you would turn it clockwise to remove it and counterclockwise to tighten it up. So it's the opposite of how you're used to screwing in nuts and bolts. So I've got a 15 millimeter impact socket. Make sure to wear safety glasses while you do this. And now I'm going to spin it clockwise to remove it. So this is the inner part of the clutch where the spring is. Now what I have to do is remove the spring from this part. If your spring is broken, just simply grab it and pull it out. In this case, it's not broken, it's just weak. So I'm going to turn the spring to where it meets together right here. So I'm just going to grab it and spin it around a bit. Watch your fingers while you do this. And now I'm going to disconnect it from here. And I'll just simply pull the spring right out. Don't worry if you damage it because you're not going to be reusing it. If it's a pain like this spring and doesn't want to easily come out, just use a pair of side cutters and you can snip it. And there I've got the old spring out. Before I reinstall this part, I'm going to wash it in some straight gas. And I'm also going to remove the clutch drum and clean it as well in some straight gas. If you have a parts washer at home, you can use that as well. And make sure that you do not use mixed gas when you wash these parts because it could make your clutch slip after if there's oil residue on it. So you just want to make sure it's really clean. So you want to make sure the inside of the clutch drum is really clean here. So you can see why it's important to clean these parts. Look at all the dirt that came off of them. So now what you need is your new clutch spring and it's part number 501-4561-01 from Husqvarna. Now to reinstall the spring, take your clutch apart like this. Now you can insert the spring 
in this position here. Just a bit out like that. Push it in there. Now you want to grab this part, bring it in all the way like that. Now you want to hold this together. You want to bring the spring to about half here. Pass the hole in the center right here. And now you can push it. And now stick the clutch together. And keep pushing and the spring will come out. Now you can pull on the spring, but don't pull too hard because you don't want to stretch it, that's for sure. There it is. Now what you need to do is insert the hook from this end of the spring into the loop over here. Now I just inserted the clutch in the vise to do this, but not tight because I don't want to damage it. And it's best if you use two pairs of needle nose pliers, one to hold the spring from being pulled out, and the other one to actually insert the spring into the other one, just like this. And there you go, you've got your new spring installed in your clutch. Once you've got the spring in, you can reinstall the clutch on the chainsaw. I'm going to start by reinstalling the clutch drum and the sprocket. Make sure you reinstall the sprocket the same side it was as when you took it off. Just push this in. Now you want to reinstall the clutch with the nut facing out. And remember that the threads are left-handed, meaning that you will turn counterclockwise to tighten it up. And I'm not going to use the impact wrench to tighten up the clutch. What I'm going to do for that is pull out the recoil a bit, like this. So approximately this much rope out. And for now I'll just tie it around the handlebar. I'll show you why I'm doing that a little bit later on. Now I'm going to insert my nylon rope in the cylinder. This is to lock up the engine so that I'm able to tighten up the clutch properly. Now what I'm going to do is grab the handle and the rope that I pulled out earlier and hold it. Next I've got my ratchet and my 15mm socket and I'm going to start tightening it up slowly. And while I'm tightening it, I'm going to let the rope go back into the recoil so that I don't put all the pressure inside the recoil parts. Now the cylinder is going to lock up. Once that I turn the clutch to tighten it and the engine locked up with the rope, I let the rope go back into the recoil, then I know that I'm not going to damage the recoil parts. So now I'm just going to tighten it up a bit. You don't have to go crazy because it will tighten up itself when you're using the saw. Now I'm going to remove the rope from the cylinder, reinstall the spark plug, and now reinstall the cover. Now I'm going to put the saw on the side and I'm going to reinstall the bar and chain. Just a tip to all the new users out there, when you reinstall a chain on the chainsaw, you want to make sure that the sharp end of the chain is pointing toward the front of the saw. So now I'm going to reinsert the chain and make sure that it's on the sprocket properly in there. Put it in the end of the bar and then pull the bar out a bit. Now that the bar and chain are on properly, I'm going to reinstall the clutch cover. Now I'm going to put the saw back down. Now I had just snugged these nuts previously, so I'm just going to hold up the bar and now tighten up the nuts. And you want these to be on fairly tight. So now that the clutch is all reinstalled, I'm going to take it outside and you should not see the chain turn when the saw is idling. So as you can see that cured the problem, it's not a job that's too hard to do. I'm sure if you follow this video, you'll be able to do it yourself. Even if the spring looks different than on this chainsaw, it's always the same principle. So thanks again for watching, make sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time.